Well, in last week's video, I ended up mentioning that I've become a student of the wagons themselves as far as how I learned how to do what I do. Now, it doesn't mean that I've become a student of the history of the wagons, but my intention and goal has been over these past 40 years to study the style and craftsmanship that went into building these wagons. And that varies from wagon manufacturer to wagon manufacturer. And so because I work on such a wide variety of wagons, the style of craftsmanship has become very important for me to focus on. And then learning the skills to duplicate or replicate what was done. So the wagon I'm working on today through these videos is a homemade wagon. So my goal and intention is to stay true to the integrity of that wagon just as much as I would have an old 1800s traditional wagon. Now if it becomes necessary that I make adaptations or changes because of safety's sake, that's what I will do. But even on this wagon, I'll stay true to the character of this wagon. So this is the wagon that we've been working on. These are a couple of wagons that are over at the Range Riders Museum in Mile City. Nice old army military wagon. Have a nice Bane wagon there also to look at. This is a Buckeye wagon that I have here. Also this is an old Mitchell wagon. This is a picture of a Winona style wagon and not all wagons are identifiable. This one is a John Deere wagon running gear. This one is a Studebaker. You watch this fix this one. This is also another Studebaker. This running gear here is an International. So you begin to see when you become accustomed to looking at traditional style wagons that when you see a wagon like this, yeah, it's not really quite traditional. Tongue is not traditional. When we start to recognize traditional bolsters and standards, when we see this, it's not quite traditional. The rear axle with the reach hounds and all that, there's a traditional style to putting these together, and this is not a traditional style. It's functional, and it'll work, but it's not really traditional. This is a traditional brake clutch and block. We look at this and go, eh, it's not traditional. But it'll function. This wagon will function. We just need to make it to where it is safe. Now the tongue that the owner brought for me to transfer over has a sliding style neck yoke. This is more for implements where the old one was more of a ring style. So I'm going to disassemble this sliding rail from the tongue and we'll put on just a bolt center neck yoke to make this work. Well, a tongue of this style generally is found on farm equipment more than it is on wagons. It's been off of some implement, perhaps a cultivator or a rake, but it's a little wide, so I'm going to narrow it down. And since it's been mounted on some other form of equipment, it has some extra holes in it. So consequently, I'm going to take and dowel and fill this big hole. And I don't really understand why this old tongue was notched. I don't quite understand the reason for it. So I'm not going to notch the second tongue. I'm going to actually adapt the iron and leave the tongue full thickness.
So with the double tree transferred from the old tongue to the newer tongue, we had to transfer the bottom wear plate and this top iron called the hammer strap. So I'm not going to put the ring style neck yoke on this newer tongue. I want a bolt center neck yoke. But this old neck yoke is too narrow. So I have a wider neck yoke that's going to match the double tree evener in the old double tree. Now there is kind of a method to the madness. You see the direction of the grain? Well I want the pull to be in line with the grain when it's hooked up to the horses. And this will give the neck yoke its greatest strength. So when the wagon is being held back when it's going downhill by the team, or when the teamster asks the team to stop the wagon, all the pressure through the harness is transferred forward to this neck yoke. And the center bolt, which will actually attach this neck yoke to the tongue itself, also needs to be in line with these neck yoke ends. Well, this customer wanted an additional six inches in length from the double tree to the neck yoke. We've got just right at six, six and a half inches. So this should make a good transfer for the tongue. Well, one of my observations when working on this wagon was the inefficiency of the brakes that were on this wagon. A straight face brake with a round curved wheel gives a very limited contact surface. So I talked the owner into allowing me to put a different set of brakes on them, one that will actually fit the wheels and I'm going to increase the size of contact on these brake blocks. And since the irons don't line up well with the tires, I'm going to have to modify these blocks just a little bit. So while you watch me put these new blocks in, you can probably see why a tapered brake clutch has its advantage. On this little straight homemade piece of iron, you can see all the downward pressure is being held only by two quarter inch bolts. Now the best braking coefficients when you're working with mechanical brakes is rubber against steel. So since these wheels have steel tires, I'm going to put a rubber pad on the blocks. In the other case of using wagons with rubber tires, 
I would put a steel face on the block. Well, this is as far as I'm going to take this wagon. We've made sure that the wheels aren't going to come off. We've increased the tongue length by six inches and we've increased the braking ability with better fitting brake blocks. Well, I've been asked by a number of you what I do in my spare time. What do I do for fun? Well, one of the things I enjoy doing is going to the mountains. We are about 25, 26 miles from the face of the Beartooth Mountains. So when I can, I enjoy going up to see the mountain scenery. And you can tell that by the number of scenery shots that I like to include on the front of my videos. Well, here a while back, I loaded up my four-wheeler and I went to the mouth of the Clarks Fork Canyon in northern Wyoming by the little town of Clark. So I've included a few shots of that afternoon, hoping that you might enjoy some of the scenery that I get to enjoy. As always, thanks for watching.